Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today I've got something a little bit different for you. I'm talking about business and you know you're going to get to know a bit more about me and how I started blogging and how I started YouTube and a bit about my brand Hawkins and Shepherd. So I'm being interviewed by my good friend Peter Brooker who's behind the camera right now and uh, yeah let's just get cracking really. Uh, this first episode is about me. So, Carl, yes. how you doing? I'm good thanks. <laughs> I've had a good day today, I've had my coffee and uh, I've had a nice long walk, I've done a bit of co-box. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up? So London born and bred? Mm, London born but bred and grew up in Kent. Mm -hmm. So I was born in Whitechapel and then gradually my parents took us out of East London a bit more further southeast, 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 and we ended up in uh, Gravesend in Kent. So my schooling, my primary school, my secondary school uh, was was in Gravesend basically. I never went to uni, um, so I missed out on that unfortunately. I was kind of a workaholic. Right. I was very much uh, kind of just get out there, make some money, work hard, and then that will prove my my worth later on in life rather than sort of the educational route. And what were you like at school? Oh, I love these questions. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I was, I was good. I was a good kid. Um, I didn't get up into any mischief or anything like that. But on the flip side, I was in all the sports teams. Yeah, I used to play yeah, football, basketball, cricket. Um, yeah. So after school? Much everything. I was also um, vice, uh, oh, what was it? You know when you're prefect, you know when you're prefect? So I, was, mm -hmm. I wasn't head prefect, head boy, I was like vice. So basically I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so after school, what yeah. happens next? So actually my first job was at the school that I went to. And it was a bit of a weird time for me, if I'm honest. Because going from sixth form where I studied economics and IT and doing that for two years and then having friends in the upper sixth form and the lower sixth form, in, in particular the lower sixth form because then the year later they were in upper six and I was a member of staff. So it was quite weird. Initially I turned down the offer. It was for a, um, a job doing IT my job title was IT technician um, and initially over the six weeks holiday I turned down the offer basically I was like no I can't go back to school I can't do this but they called me up again and I didn't have any joy getting a, a proper job so um, gladly they still accepted my you know, acceptance for the job um, and at the time I remember it was around five and a half or six thousand per year is what I was on um, as an IT technician. And I think my first job as as a IT technician at Norfolk School for Boys was um, to glue in, you know mice, these days your mice is very Bluetooth, it's infra infrared, but back in the day, you had these balls, really heavy balls that kind of when you moved it, turned these, these little cogs in the mouse. So basically the kids at the school would just un take this ball out and throw at each other. So my first job was to put the balls back in the mice and then super glue the cap back on so they couldn't get into the balls. That, yeah, it took, uh, probably took a good week to do that and uh, yeah, I grew from there. So having a quite sporty background, yep. but then going into IT, would you yeah. say that was a lateral move or was there just something in IT that drew you in particular? No, I mean, I've always been a sporty person. I'm still a sporty person, but I'm also a geek at heart. And uh, it wasn't really any kind of... I've always studied IT and I've always been interested in, in computers and that side of stuff and gaming when I was a bit, a bit younger. Not so, much, uh, not so much now, I don't really have time for it. But, yeah, it, I didn't really see it as any kind of move. It was it kind of, you know, the sports side of me just was always there. And IT is a career. Mm. And even now, doing what I'm doing, I always stick to keeping fit and doing sports. In fact, I'm uh, playing football tonight. So yeah, it uh, should be fun. Do you find it uh, a lot of people in the IT industry struggle with that dynamic of staying fit, having a healthy lifestyle, but also being glued 
to the desk yeah. a lot of the time. Definitely, but I don't think that's necessarily an IT industry thing. I think it's a nine to five, or actually not even these days nine to five. It's more often eight to six jobs. You know, when you're in the office, I think it's really hard, especially going back to going back to when I was doing a job in an office, and it's not a bullying kind of atmosphere, but you are made to feel that you need to be in earlier than you should and you need to stay later than you should and there's certain people that are looking out for you leaving and I do feel in an office that side of things is quite it's quite it's quite full on in fact it's one of the reasons why I left my previous job um, and yeah you're, you're made to feel that you can't have a lunch break or you you know and therefore the fitness side of things just falls down and you forget about it and you're just going to on a Sainsbury's M&S or whatever getting a sandwich bringing it back to your desk sitting at your desk typing away one-handed while you're eating one-handed and it's not a it's not a good atmosphere for offices and nowadays it's good to see that there's a lot more flexibility in that side of things and uh, the corporate offices are becoming a little bit less so uh, but I know I know companies out there that are still being you know treated in this way and uh, Oh, it's a shame. It's, it's it's not good. It's not it's not good atmosphere for your employees. Mm. Um, and so after you do the job at your school, the yeah. fixing the mouse is what's <laughs> next? What's next for Carl? Where does he go in his twenties? So uh, yeah, so after I, I worked as an IT technician, uh, I did it for eight to twelve months. I can't remember exactly. So it wasn't a long time, but my my previous um, form teacher, he was instrumental. This guy called Steve Gurr. If he's watching, I doubt he will be, but if he's watching. Um, he was, I remember every month that I was at school, working at school, he would come up to me, after I've been there for six months, he's like, are you looking for your next step? What is your next step? Every month, and especially after I've been there around the eight month period, he was every week, every day, how's the job hunting going? And he was pushing me because he didn't want me to be institutionalised in the school because he knew that, well, I, hopefully he saw something else in me and he knew that I could do better. And I felt, felt that some people probably would stay in that environment and in, in that job and just for, just for comfort. And it was a good job and it was a good opportunity, but I wanted more. And he pushed me and I managed to get a job in um, this company called Morse Group which were an IT consultancy company, and uh, they were based in Middlesex. So I was travelling in from Kent all the way into Middlesex for pretty much took me two hours. So two hours from Kent to Middlesex and two hours back. In fact, I was getting into Waterloo and then going back out the other side of London where, while everyone else was coming in. On the plus side, I always got a seat. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, but I did feel that it was only going to be for for maybe a year, kind of like a stepping stone. And especially at the start of your career, I do feel that you, you kind of need to move companies, give it a year. Obviously, you don't want to keep doing that into your uh, late 20s and 30s, but especially the first few, three to four years, I was all about trying to experience as much as possible in different companies and meeting new people. Um, so yeah, I did that. The job there was um, internal IT support. So I was first line, I was picking up the phone call, uh, the phone calls and you know rebooting computers and just basic IT support really. Mm. And do you feel like that's put you in good stead for what you're doing now with your your Hawkins and Shepherd online business and your blogging? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say that job because after that was really my career. So that was a stepping stone. Like I went to a company called Trafigura after that. That was a oil commodities trading company, and that's where I really learn a huge amount of skills you know I was there for 12 and a half years so I went from support through to being the global head of IT networks and security and telephony so there was a major progression in that company and I grew in the company it was, it was probably the best time of my life I would say I mean some of the best times of my life it was it was at that company um, and the skills that I learned within that company Totally, there were so many transferable skills into starting up my business, Hawkins and Shepherd, and even the blogging side of things, but especially the business side of things, because with an e-commerce business, I feel that 
the one of the main parts to it is running lean, running efficient and automation and that is exactly what IT is all about really, you know, it's about automation, it's about project management, it's about just getting stuff done um, and yeah, I definitely, definitely helped having an IT brain with the website and kind of figuring out how I can automate my website, my e-commerce business and be able to sit on the beach potentially or you know be in a coffee shop and do something else yet the business runs itself and there's so many skills that I, I transferred over even down to behavioural competencies like um, just my personality traits and knowing how to deal with people, how to deal with business people, how to deal with my fellow colleagues, um, you know I love the industry I'm in at the moment, the blogging side of things, there's some great people. I've met some incredible guys who are creative and who have really ballsy and done their own thing and, and it's a new industry and uh, I'm really kind of humbled by a lot of these guys, I really am. Do you miss anything about your old job or the, the old IT style of life, shall we say? Yeah, yeah I do. I miss so many things about it. Um, I miss the... I actually miss the office environment. I miss going into, you know, sitting on my the same desk and uh, the same people and friends that I had there. I miss all the, all of that. I miss challenging myself to do better. I miss the promotion side of things and wanting to to take the next step on the on the corporate ladder. I miss the wage that you get every month, three days, three working days before the end of the month. I used to get it. I miss that. You know now. You know, being a freelancer, the wages, you know, whenever you get it in. Um, I miss, I'm, I, I kind of miss the routine in some ways. You know, I'm not saying that I want to do go back and do that, but there's a lot of things that I do miss about it. And it's nice to actually talk about it because um, you don't really get time to to talk about it in the past. I'm, I'm so focused on what I'm doing in the future. It's nice to look back and actually reflect on, on how things have gone for me in the past and yeah it's, it's I miss a lot of things I miss the travel you know with the job I traveled I traveled uh, a lot of places around the world and in fact some places that you would never go to I mean Africa for example I mean Nigeria Congo Angola DRC um, Namibia South Africa I mean all of these places Ghana Ivory Coast Cote d'Ivoire um, on the west of, west coast of Africa that I've been to and I've experienced, and that would not have been the case if it weren't for uh, Mike's company, Traffic Era. So, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of love there. Uh, yeah, I miss it, but we're looking forward, and uh, you know, I've got a lot more going for me now, and I've got a lifestyle business that I really can grow and I can be proud of. Something that I've achieved, you know. And looking forward, what does the next five years? Do you have a five-year plan, or do you just kind of take it month by month? Oh yeah, it's tough, really. Um, both, actually. Um, I've always got the longer-term plans, and for me, maybe not so much five years, but probably five to ten years. I want to grow Hawkins and Shepherd to be a renowned quality shirt maker that people respect and love and they want to wear my shirts. Um, I want to I want to build the business to potentially um, employ more people. Um, I, I'd love that. I'd love to, you know, it's, it's a lot of pressure on, on a business person to employ people. You know, you really have to be you have to be hundred percent that you can pay their wages for ten years because you know that you've got your your you've got someone else's life in your in your hands you know and that and that that's responsibility so I'd love to be able to employ people I'd love to have my own office with my employees and I'd love to bring my stock back in house so we've done everything in the house um, but that's that's a bit of time off you know that's that's a while away I think at the moment, it's still good being a small business that's quite automated and uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, but I would like to grow it and it has to, 
it has to, yeah, I'm, I'm dedicated to Hawkins and Shepherd doing well and being and being respected, basically. And the blogging side of things, blogging, Instagram, and and the social media side of things that I do, um, it's great because it gives me the opportunity to um, become become known for you know writing about things, uh, not just about my shirts. In fact, I like writing about everything but my shirts because it seems more natural. Um, yeah, everyone knows that I make great shirts for Quincy Shepherd, but everyone doesn't know about other brands out there, other menswear brands, other great British menswear brands, uh, people that have just started up a new collection or a new, um, a new clothing line. And I look at that and I see myself five years ago. So I like to help those guys out and I like to give something back into the industry. I mean, I'm invested in it, you know? It's not just about the blogging and Instagram, it's about um, you know, me being, being someone in the industry and that's, that's kind of where I want to be in the future. And do you find that the blog and the e-commerce site complement each other well? Can one live without the other? And do you give one a little bit more love than the other? How does it work? Yeah, What's the dynamic like? You know, when I, when I first started, I started with Hawkins and Shepherd. So that was, that was my entry into this industry. Um, <laughs> sorry, just off camera, I have a dog and he's just decided to to itch. So anyway, he's stopped now. Um, that's a good thing doing these live interviews. It's great. He's, and he's off now. Yeah. He's now. had it's enough fine. of you talking. He's had enough. Yeah, I <laughs> hope you guys haven't had enough. No, um, yeah, I, I started. Um, I started Hawkins the Shepherd. Um, so that was my entry into into, into the industry, um, and the blogging come come after it. Um, so I do feel the two are ha come hand in hand. I feel that by having a brand, it gives me credibility. And also, I do feel that by doing the blogging and Instagram and, and YouTube, etc., gives my brand credibility. And it also gives my brand free, organic publicity. So I, I do feel that they are very intrinsically linked. However, I do also feel that the two are very separate. Um, and I think... The more, the more I, I maybe I mean I'm doing this kind of thing, I do feel that they probably will become further and further separated, mm. because I think it's more organic to talk about and blog about other stuff. Um, because of I, I can't be saying that Hawkins and Shepherd are the most amazing shirt brand out there. They're this, they're that. Because it's coming from me. I need other people to tell me that. Um, while I champion other people mm. but they certainly I couldn't have got where I've got without either without both of them together and who around at this moment in time is doing what you're doing and you look up to so there's obviously like people like Oliver Proudlock that have yeah. a very public profile that also have their own brand name um, do you kind of look over your shoulders to see people coming up behind you and conversely do you look forward to the people that are already doing it yeah. and uh, who do you respect out there? Yeah, good question. I mean, I don't look over my shoulder. I think anyone who brings out a brand, fair play to them. And it doesn't matter what industry they've been in, what industry they're, they're going to be in, fair play. Like, it's hard. Like, you know, if you're going to do it, you have to put everything into it. It's not easy. It's not. I mean, there's so many, we'll get onto it later on in, in these uh, interviews, but yeah, it's difficult. So, major respect for anyone coming up and doing it. And in fact, I'll I'll be the first one to congratulate you and I'll be the first one to help you. Um, and uh, of course, like, I mean, I've major, major respect for, you know, Ollie Proudlock. He's done some, some great things. I love Serge Deneen, really good brand. Uh, I love, and there you go, I'm wearing <laughs> one of his rings right now. So, um, yeah, and where he's, he's used his public profile to build a brand, but, but now I, I, it's, it's not about his public profile. The brand stands um, stands for itself. It, it's it, the brand. In fact, take Ollie out of it. The brand will be amazing. He's he's built this um, brand that that it doesn't. In fact, it doesn't need his public profile. That's the, I mean, it's, it's a compliment because the brand is so strong. It's so good. And who would you like to collaborate with if a brand was to call you up and say? Carl, we need your input. We want to collaborate. 
In, on the blogging side of things? On the production, so a, a capsule collection or a, oh. a, a release of some kind. Wow. Tom Ford. <laughs> Easy. Easy. In fact, when I was doing research into uh, Hawkins and Shepherd, Tom Ford was the first shirt that I bought. Mm. Um, loved it. I loved the design and it was just a white pink collar shirt. And actually that was, I mean, that was the signature collection of Hawkins and Shepherd. The brand before was called pinkcollarshirts.co.uk. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to get into that, I guess. But um, yeah, so 100% Tom Ford. Tom, if you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. So yeah, thanks PR. And uh, the next episode is going to be how I started Hawkins and Shepherd. So I'm just going to go into more detail on the ins and outs, a step by step maybe, but again it's just going to be an interview and uh, so make sure you subscribe or come back in a few days and you'll find this video live. Alright, cheers guys, cheers Pete. See ya. Sorry.